Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And what you see here in this picture is a network update from AT&T. I will leave the original post in the description down below so you guys could check it out. The second rack below the first one where you see the blue arrow pointed towards, that is a C-band panel. So at and is actively deploying C-band. And as I've told you in previous videos, the deployment looks very similar to the T-Mobile uh, deployment as well. So the top rack is a T-Mobile standard site. So you have band 2, band 4, then you have the bigger N71, band 71 panel that can also do band 12, band 2, 66. And then to the right, you have the smaller squared N41 panel. If you look at the second rack below, you have T-Mobile's, I mean, at and standard LTE setup to the left with the bigger panels. And then to the right, the smaller square, that's the C-band panel. So that's going to be the setup for at and and their C-band deployments. Now you may question, whoa, this is already happening. It's, it's that quick. They're already putting it up on the sites and it's done. Uh, yes. It's happening just that quick. What is the difference or what is going to be the difference between the Verizon and the AT&T deployments? Why? There is a reason why AT&T did not spend a separate allocated amount versus Verizon. So on a per site basis, Verizon's initial investment is going to be the highest per site in the industry. I've researched it i've talked to many different people i've gotten some insights verizon will have to remodernize their network fully for c-band so once they go to the site they're going to have to touch the baseband unit to go to single ran infrastructure that that will get them going on the on the 5g core the sa the the network slicing for fixed wireless they'll have to invest in that and then of course they have to modernize the the site at the <clears throat> at the radios and the panels so why doesn't AT&T have to do the same well AT&T has done that during the first net deployments as they implemented the one touch strategy they went to the sites they touched the baseband virtual core Single RAN, uh, network slicing, that's how we got the QCI 6 for FirstNet. Theirs is already modernized and ready to go. Anything they do now, they just add they just add it via software or they just add a network card and it's ready to go. So for AT&T, C-Band is going to be a layover. They just go to the site, they spend a couple of hours get the equipment on the site and then they integrate it into the network and it's it's pretty much ready to go whereas Verizon in a, in a large part of the network they're going to have to spend about 7 to 10 business days on one site modernizing the site fully some of their newer sites that they've built since 17 18 those are ready but they have a lot of older sites to to go back to even in urban areas they have to go back to rule band 13 only sites and modernize those. So they'll be very, very busy doing that. And that's the reason why they have to accelerate that and spend that extra 10 billion outside of their yearly capex. They have to fully modernize their entire network um, <clears throat> entirely. They have to entirely um, modernize it. That's why I'm a little confused about Neville's statement on at and and Verizon. He seemed he seemed very concerned about their deployments. And there's a disconnect somewhere because if Neville believes that at and and Verizon are going to go to their sites and not modernize the radios, he's sadly mistaken. I mean, Verizon is not going to modernize that entire site and the baseband unit and just put C-band on there. They're going to modernize 
the 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 low band radios that are properly needed with you know the dual radios that he's been using and AT AT&T has been doing the same so that whole site is going to get modernized and they have to touch every site with C band and as you see here AT&T is already putting it up on sites it's going to be used for testing they should be live within a month then they'll be utilized for testing in low power mode the the public won't have access to is there there's a special sim needed that only the engineers will have access to and they'll get to testing so it'll be very interesting to see how quickly this gets deployed i still say att can deploy it quicker verizon will get a move going as well of course they're accelerating their spending so of course they're going to do it very quickly but again verizon is going to have to go to the site and modernize that entire site if it's not already a newer site so let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below i find it very interesting that at t is getting moving their sites are mostly ready they have about a 70 plus percentage virtual core so a lot of their network is already much more modernized and ready to go and so again this is something that t-mobile had to work through as well they've been working through that since 2017 on the multi-year investment so when they went back to upgrade sites to that band 71 n 71 with the dual radios they also got the baseband units ready back then to to take in the the n41 so that's like i said that's a risk that they took an investment that they made and they got their baseband units ready for that initial sprint spectrum so again let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below look forward to reading your comments if you have been on the channel or you're new to the channel and you have not yet liked, shared, subscribed, make sure you do so. Hit the notification bell so you are notified when I do upload content. Make sure to follow the social media outlets for more updates and interactions. Thanks again for watching. This is Tyrone with Tech Life, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.